find me contemplating the creation of a crevice garden. What's one of those, I hear you ask? Well, a crevice garden is a way of displaying alpines having split the rock into attractive slivers so that you can introduce the alpines and they look terribly natural. Now that's what I'm going to try and do in this lovely trough. So it'll be a crevice garden in a trough. Now, why do I want to do that? Well, I love rock gardens and scree gardens, but I don't have enough room for one of those. There's something about getting down to the detail of alpines that's particularly appealing. Um, so I thought it would be a good idea to have them in this trough and I don't have to do a lot of extra work in the garden. I've got a fantastic stone trough. I've got some slate that I hope will split into pleasing striations. I've got the compost. All I need to do is go off to the greenhouse to see what we've got by way of plants. It's tempting to think that all rock garden plants like the same conditions, but they're a mixed bunch and you'll find some for shade and some for damp, some for acid soil and some for alkaline soil. I've chosen mine to cope with the bright light and extreme heat at the base of the west-facing wall of my house. They'll get lots of reflected light and plenty of neglect, so these are a very tough bunch. So, what have I chosen? I've got seven plants here. This first one is Dianthus hematocalyx pindicola. Like all the pinks, good on limestone. Lovely sort of grey-green foliage, pretty little pink flowers, supposedly scented, although can't really get any scent from just one. It's about to come out now, so it's going to be a picture all through June, July. It's from the Balkans. I rather like that one. I think that's rather good. The next one is Saxifrage. We've got Saxifraga cochlearis pseudovaldensis. It's a crusty Saxifrage and it's just sending up its first spike, short spike of white flowers. Bean flower from June through to July. Because that's nice and small, I think that's going to be one of the ones that I'll be able to get into the crevices in my crevice garden. We have a Phlox. This one, unfortunately, has just gone over. This is Phlox Zyglinerblut, which is something about gypsy blood, I think. It's a, a Dutch word. Just gone over, but when the flowers were out, they were quite a bit more red than this, a bit less purpley. Lovely matte-forming plant. Starts flowering in April, goes through till May. This is Campanula cantata. It's a new hybrid. The Campania is such an enormous group of plants and there are so many that are useful for the garden. Particularly like this one though. Very dainty blue and it'll be in flower for the next couple of months so that's going to be really rather nice I think. Next I've got, oh this is a, a nice sort of semi-succulent one. This is Athenema cochetsii which feels slightly fleshy leaves, slightly unusual for, for uh, an alpine, but these very pretty simple heads of lovely soft pink. I think that's slightly unusual. Again, a nice small root ball, so I should be able to get that into the crevices. I love this globularia. This is globularia bilidifolia with these sweet little pink cushions of blue and very attractive glossy foliage, which is slightly unusual for a rock plant. So I rather like that one. It would be jolly good for limestone. And then, having just gone over, unfortunately, we had the yellow, woolly, soft, very tactile, Draba unanensis from China. Again, dear little plant, so I can squash that into the uh, crevices. So I think, all in all, these are going to work pretty well together. Now I'm going to attempt to break this rock into nice, even, thin slices. Now, I haven't done this before. I've no idea how it's going to go. Um, I may end up in casualty probably be quite quiet this afternoon. Um, I'm going to use cold chisel and a hammer and just go for it and see what happens. Huh, I've been dreading this. Let's see what happens. Oh, Ooh, it's starting to go. Be careful when you do this bit and make sure you wear eye protection. See, it's not going to break right the way through. the way down. Oh, well, never mind, that, that's all part of the charm and character of it. Let's keep going and see if we can salvage something from this. Ah, oh, that's the spirit! That's what we're after. These beautiful thin pieces which we then put back together with soil in between and then we can put the plants in. That's creating a crevice. Hey, look at that. Whoa, how about that then? So here we are back at the trough. Um, you can see the trough's got a huge plug hole in the bottom, so we need to block that up so the soil mix doesn't fall out. So uh, good old broken crocs just to 
cover that over. Um, now what I discovered was that my beautifully cut pieces of slate will actually be lost if I just put them in the bottom of the trough. So I need to build up a little bit. So I found some spare bits of uh, stone and slab. I'm going to put those in the bottom so that when I'm in a position to start using the, the slices to make my crevices, um, they'll be just standing slightly proud at the top of the uh, trough and I think that'll be quite attractive. So what about the compost or growing medium? Well, I've chosen John Innes number three because that's a soil-based compost. It's going to have enough nutrients in it to keep these plants going for a little while. So that's great, but what about the free drainage? Well, in order to make it nice and open, we need plenty of coarse horticultural grit. So I've used one part of the John Innes number three to two parts of the grit, and that's given me this really nice open gritty mixture to use for the plants. Now it gets down to the point where we have to put some plants in and I'm a bit nervous about this because I'm not sure I've got enough plants. I've only got seven and you can see they come in these uh, quite small pots but my life would be a lot easier if they were simply rooted cuttings and the only way I could do that would be to grow my own. So it may be that I just carry on using the plants I've got, trying to squeeze them in as best I can into the crevices and then maybe as they mature I can take some cuttings to fill in the gaps. So, Having taken this one out of its little pot, I've got to try and, without damaging it too much, make it small enough to get in here, which I think is just about the thing there. But then, of course, I can't leave any air pockets, so very carefully filling back in, trying not to lose the, the lovely crevice effect that we've worked so hard to get. Squeeze those in making sure, just as though it was an ordinary gardening plant, we've not, we're not got any spaces where we get an air pocket. And I'm thinking another nice little small one here is the Draba, the Unanensis from China. If we can pull the same trick, we'll be doing well. They have been watered, so they're going to be okay about being squished up to a point. But I'll just to try and do the same thing again. Now, I've taken the label out because, as you might imagine, big label in there is going to be pretty distracting. But what I will do before I uh, finish and forget completely is just to do a rough sketch with the names marked on so that I know what it is I've got. Lovely Companion of Cantata, which I think will be quite an easy one to grow. Who could resist those lovely blue bells? So just to finish off, I'm going to water them all in well so I can see that all the compost is actually filled in all the pockets and we haven't got any gaps. And then I'm just going to dress the whole lot with some leftover horticultural grit so we've got a lovely even and quite appropriate mulch. And there we go. One crevice garden in a trough. I thought it would be interesting to revisit the alpine trough one year later. It's now June, so let's see what's worked and what hasn't. What I didn't know at the time of planting was that we would have an unseasonally hot, dry spell immediately afterwards. Of course, these plants were chosen to withstand just those conditions, but they were immature at the time. They'd scarcely had time to put down any roots to seek out moisture. By the time I'd realised this, some had really suffered. So those that have done well must be super tough, so let's have a look at them. Now this is the alpine phlox. I would expect this to do well, and it has. Lovely reddish pink flowers, just gone over now. Well, as every gardener would say, you should have seen it a couple of weeks ago. It was an absolute picture, but I'm really pleased with this one. 
So over here we've got the globularia. This has survived pretty well, hasn't put on masses of growth, but we were treated to some lovely fluffy blue flowers a few weeks ago. This saxifrage is Pseudovaldensis, crusty foliage and a white flower. It's done reasonably well, not put on masses of growth, but I'm optimistic that next year we'll see this coming on really nicely. This is Athenema. This has done really well. This is the one that had the slightly succulent, juicy leaves. It's put on a lot of growth. It's flowered very reliably. The centre's a bit open, but I think that's just its nature. It's growing towards the edge of the trough and blurring the boundaries rather nicely. This is the Draba from China, particularly woolly plant. It didn't do at all well. The first one died off completely. I think the roots just couldn't cope with the extreme heat. I replaced it. The second one has gone the same way. So this was a disaster. Shan't be planting Draba again. This is Dianthus pindicola. This has been extremely reliable. Not at all difficult to grow. It's coped with all the heat, all the dry, and it's been extremely pretty. And this is Campanula cantata. Now this should have been an easy plant to grow, but the first one I put in died. I think it just couldn't cope with that sudden hot spell. I've replaced it, and this new one is putting on quite a bit of growth, and I notice I've got some seedlings growing up through the gravel. So all in all, one year on, I'm quite pleased with the way the trough has developed. But there are some things I would do differently. I think next time I'd hold out for rooted cuttings. Squashing the root balls in between the, the rock crevices was just a little bit too challenging. I'd also leave more room for the grit. I found that when I was watering the trough, the grit would wash off. And it was very difficult to get water in gently enough not to run off. So that was a, a bit of a, a learning curve. And just watering in general was very tricky. Sometimes it's a good idea to put in perhaps a tiny bottle or piece of tube into which you can put the water so it can percolate gently at its own pace rather than try and water with a fine rose from the watering can. But these are minor things and generally I'm very pleased. <laughs>